with it. Find y prime if that's the definition. Now, is that a function? What do you think? It doesn't really look like a function. And also, if we wanted to differentiate that using our regular differentiation, we'd have to solve for y. Can someone just tell me what's, what's the primary reason why you know that you're not going to be able to solve for y on that one? Or easily. Because it's on both sides. It doesn't matter if it's on both sides. Uh, inside a trig function and outside a trig function. Does that pose singular problems for isolating? Yeah, it poses really nasty problems. So you really are not going to be able to isolate. I don't know of a way to do that off the top of my head. So you're going to differentiate with respect to x. The way you remember this is you, instead of writing y, do you remember what we did yesterday? We wrote it as f of x. This helps you remember that you're treating it as a function. Negative sine of x. Okay, so like this. So let's take the derivative. And which one? Oh, squared. Thank you. So uh, what's the derivative of sine? Uh, cosine. So it's going to be cosine x plus f of x times what? 1 plus <coughs> prime. f prime of x. Yes, we had to, what rule did we just use? Uh, chain chain rule. rule. So right here, we just used the chain rule. Um, let's go to the, uh, the right-hand side. What rule are we going to have to use? The product, product rule. So the derivative of the first is going to be 2 f of x times what? Sine f oh. prime. Remember, you have to, this right here is the derivative of the left yeah. times negative sine x. But why do you have 2 wait, f wait. Pro times prime x? Okay. f prime of x, that's correct. So we need to multiply this out a little bit. So we end up with cosine of x plus f of x times 1 plus, I'm just distributing out the left hand side, cosine x plus f of x equals, uh, I'll put it first, f of x squared cosine x minus what? Minus 2 f of x f prime of x sine x. I just rearranged it, that's it. So what am I trying to isolate? What am I trying to isolate? F so f prime is right there, and f prime is right there. So what am I going to do? Nope. Nope. What do I have to do first? You've literally done this 100 times. Nope. How do you solve? It's in two places. What? Get them all on one side. Get them all on one side. Thank you, kids. f prime of x cosine of x plus f of x plus 2 f of x f prime of x sine x equals f of x squared cosine x minus cosine x plus f of x. All I've done is rearrange. I've done no calculus for the past two lines. Now what do I do? Now what do I do? Factor out f prime of x. So f prime of x times what? Cosine x plus f of x plus 2 f of x sine x equals that same thing, correct? So what does f prime of x equal in this case? F x all squared cosine x minus cosine of x plus f of x all over cosine x plus f of x plus 2 f of x sine x. What is f of x? Y. So f prime of x in terms of x and y going to be equal to what? Y, y squared cosine, cosine x minus cosine x plus y. y all over cosine x plus y plus 2y sine x. There it is right there. There's your derivative. Given that that's what it looks like when you do implicit differentiation, do you even want to think about what it is if you do differentiation? No, it's going to be really terrible. There it is. That's it. You need the derivative. You need both x and y in the derivative because since this isn't a function, an x value doesn't describe one y value. An x value could describe how many y values? Uh, as many as you want, because does it have to pass the vertical line test? No, this thing does not have to pass the vertical line test. Yeah, really easy to make a simple mistake? Yes, it is super, super easy to make a simple mistake. So let's try it again. Not bad? Uh, I think so. Derivative of the first one, what do you have to use? Uh, product rule. Product rule. So it's going to be <coughs> two times the derivative of the first times y plus the first times the derivative of the second, plus 6x to the first, plus 2xy plus x squared y prime is equal to? Zero. So you know that 2y plus 2xy prime plus 6x plus 
2xy plus x squared y prime is equal to? Zero. Zero. So 2xy prime plus x squared y prime is equal to negative 2y minus 6x minus 2xy. So y prime is going to be negative 2y minus 6x minus 2xy all over x squared prime plus Whoa. Whoa. Two, 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 sorry. 2xy prime plus? No, it's just 2x. What, what? It's only 2x. Oh, the y prime goes away. Sorry about that. So it's 2x plus x squared. All done. Go to lunch. Oh my gosh. How do I isolate y? What do I do first? x equals y cubed. Good. What does y equal? X, x to the y. X to the y. Yeah, you said the same thing. That was good. X to the? One third. One third. Exactly. Good. So what does y prime equal? Uh, one third x to the negative Negative two thirds. It's clean enough, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's use implicit differentiation instead. So we have x over y cubed equals 1. This one's a little harder because it's, it's a little more simple than what you're used to. That's a quotient, correct? Mm -hmm. So what do you have to use? Quotient. The quotient rule. What's the low function? Y What's the high function? X. Low d high minus high y prime. d low. What's the derivative of the bottom? 3y uh, squared. Three y squared, correct? Three y squared prime y prime. Y prime. All over. Yeah. All over. What? Y cubed to low d high minus high d low over low squared equals what? Zero. Equals zero. Let's solve for y first. So we have y cubed is equal to 4 minus x squared. y is equal to what? 4 minus x squared to the... I like writing it like that if I know I'm going to have to differentiate. It's easier because you have to think about it in fraction form anyway. So what does y prime equal? Uh, one third, 4, minus 4 minus x squared to the negative 2 thirds times negative 2x. That is the derivative. Can you clean it up a little bit? Yeah, you can. y prime is equal to what? Negative 2x over 3 times 4 minus x squared to the... And could you get rid of the negative exponent by putting it down? And you, you could. Is it debatable which is more simple? It is debatable. That's fine. That's where I would stop right there. Now, though, let's use, what do we use now? Um, what's the first term become, Graves? What's the first term? Look up there. What's it become? 6 times what? 6 y squared. Y prime plus 8x minus y prime is equal to? 6x to the fifth. To the fifth. Yeah, there's an invisible 1 times there, right? And what are we isolating? Y prime. Y prime. So we have 6y squared. 6y squared y prime minus, minus y prime is equal to 6x to the fifth minus 8x. Y prime is equal to 6x to the fifth minus... 8x. Oh, did I not square something? No, it's good. Over what? 6y squared minus what? 1. If I factored. There it is. Done. That's great. You will do things like that. The thing is, when implicit differentiation is useful, it is super useful. Now, here's a question for you. Here's something we can answer right now. This is actually not too hard. I could give you this, and I could ask you, where is the tangent line horizontal? The tangent line is horizontal when the derivative is equal to zero. zero. So we have the derivative, right? Yeah. It looks nasty, but here's the thing. A fraction equals zero when what is true? The numerator. the numerator has to be zero. So you look at this, and you're like, oh, man, this is terrible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not bad, though, because it's at zero times what? X times 6x to the Four. minus eight. equals. Zero. So you know it's at x equals zero, right? But you also need to solve 6x to the fourth minus 8 is equal to zero. zero. So 6x to the 4th is equal to 8. So x to the 4th equals 4 thirds, right? So x is equal to plus or minus 4 thirds to the 1 fourth. Exactly. So how many points are there going to be? Three of them. And at 0, at negative 4 thirds to 1, and at positive. 
if I asked you for the points, here's the key thing. If I asked you for the points, are these the points? No, you would say the horizontals are tangent at these x values. Negative 4 thirds to the 1 fourth, 0 and positive 4 thirds. If I asked you the, for the points, what would you need to do? Plug those x values back into here and get the y value. It's not impossible. Go ahead. 